Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgurn Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In this episode, we are going to start off by going to a tree with a swing on it. And apparently the tree is stout, I guess I missed that part. But there is yet another mini-game we can do here. Pretty much every everything there is in the 100 Acre Wood is a mini-game. I think that's pretty obvious by now. But this one is actually one of the more, the funnier ones, I think. And after, I think there might be a cutscene here. Look, Pooh, something is floating this way. I think you're right, Piglet. What could it be? Why, it looks like Eeyore. Hello, Eeyore, if it is you. Hello, Pooh. Yes, it's me. Could you pull me out? That is, if it's not too much trouble. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. Alright guys, so obviously we've got to help out Eeyore because it doesn't look like Pooh is going to be able to. And the first time I ever played, I didn't realize... Is he even over there? Eeyore should... Yeah, there's Eeyore. I was just about to say, it almost happened to me again. I didn't realize what I was supposed to do here. You're supposed to jump in after Eeyore, and I think we're probably going to get another couple of lines of dialogue here. But we have to help him get his tail back, I believe. Thank you, Pooh. Thank you, other you. You know, floating along out there, it seemed like something was missing. And something's still missing. Why, Eeyore's tail is gone! And that's exactly what I was talking about. And how ridiculous does he look without a tail? Is that what's missing? Let's see. Yep, lost it again. Wonder where it went this time. It's not much of a tail, though I'm sort of attached to it. Apparently not, huh? But I don't know why anybody would look for it. Probably won't find it anyway. Sora, why don't we all look for yours, Tail? Alright, sounds like a plan and it sounds like a minigame. Is that going to be Owl again or is that going to be Rabbit going trying to talk to us? Owl again. Hopefully his wings don't flip out this time. Searching from a high place is the quickest way to find it. Owl, can you fly up high and help us find yours, Tail? Sorry, but my eyes aren't what they used to be. Too much reading, you know. How does, how does that even make sense? Does reading make your eyes go bad or something like that? If so, I didn't really realize that. But I can offer good advice. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. See that swing up there? Take Pooh there. You're a bit too big for the swing, but Pooh should fit nicely. I'll tell you more when you get there. And getting there is half the battle because, and I'll show you in a second why it's, you know, a little bit difficult. But look right here, is that not Eeyore's tail, like right there? I don't know why I can't just pick it up. We have to go through a mini-game just to get the tail off this thing right here. And I wonder if Rabbit has anything to say about this. Let's all look very hard to help our friend Eeyore. That is not actually all that helpful. I thought he might be like, Well, guys, the rabbit or the tail is right here. But to get Pooh to go over here, this was the other reason I could never figure out what to do. And I guess I didn't think about talking to Owl here. And I'm not going to because he tends to be long-winded. But you actually have to lock on to Pooh for him to follow you. Like, how in the world? I, well, the good thing is Owl does tell you that, but if he didn't tell you that, I think a whole lot of people would have been stuck. And not only that, but later on, like, down here a little bit, there's gonna be honey pots, you know, near the path or whatever. And we all know how much Pooh loves honey. So even if there is the, you know, the incentive of getting on a swing, which is probably pretty fun to these innocent characters, these honey pots are going to distract him. He better not- There he is, he's already off track. And this is just like- I wish Joe was here because I would talk to him about uh, Resident Evil 5. This reminds me of- this is kind of what, like, why I don't like Resident Evil 5. It might sound ridiculous, but this is how I feel when I play Resident Evil 5 and the AI doesn't cooperate. This is exactly how it feels. This is why I don't like Resident Evil 5. And this- I mean, it's not this bad, obviously, but sometimes the AI in that game just doesn't work. Like, look at this. When I'm locking onto him, he's supposed to be following me, right? That doesn't always work in Resident Evil 5 either. Obviously, you don't lock on to people in Resident Evil 5 like that, but the AI doesn't always help you either. Wow, apparently I didn't have to go all the way up the hill. I thought I had to get him to the swing here, but look, Pooh is so excited to get on the swing. He's going, you know, the innocent walk. 
And Owl is going to put his words in again. I really wish he was like the Owl in Ocarina of Time. Never thought I'd say that, but at least you could like skip through his dialogue really, really quickly. Here's what to do. First, get ready to push. How? Like this. Like this? Then give, press R1 to give Pooh a push. Press R1. This is like the funniest, like, breaking the fourth wall sequence I think I've ever seen in this game. But the next step, as he says, is basically you have to press R1 again when he tells you to. When he raises his wings like that. The thing is, there are two different objectives at this point. We want him to crash into that wooden thing, which is, I, I think, like 20 meters away or 20 feet or however long. And then we want to break 40 meters or feet or yards, or I think it might be, because we want to finish that. I think that's what we need to complete this minigame in our notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get, like, try and break the wood thing first, and then I'm going to come back and try and break 40. Alright, so let's try this. I never get this right on the first try. I guess we might be able to. Usually what I like to do is as soon as he raises his wings... Wow, I completely messed up that time. But as soon as he raises his wings is when I like to press R1. Even though that doesn't, like, you know, make you go really far. Is that going to be enough? I don't think that's even going to be enough. Yeah, not even enough. Went right in the thing. In the drink, I guess. You want to go, I think, like I said, it's about 20 yards to that wooden stack, or whatever that thing is over there. And I'm not sure exactly, because whenever I try what he told me to, like basically when he puts his wings down, press R1, I go way, way over it. So let's go ahead and try this again. Alright, so I can only just imagine how long this is going to take. This is going to be one of those mini games where I thought it was only going to take like five, not even five minutes, like one try. And it's going to end up taking like... Five minutes is probably closer to what I was trying to say there. All right, moment of truth. Way, way, way too far. Take, what is this, take three already? All right, third try. That looks pretty good to me, guys. I think that might actually do it, please. Yes, thank goodness. It only took like three or four tries. I already lost count. But there is his, you know, tail with a bow on it. Hmm, that looks familiar. How's it looking? Whoa, Sora's really close to the, the hindquarters of Eeyore, right? What is he doing? Oh my, how have I never seen that before? There we go. It's not much of a tail, but it's mine. Thanks, everyone. I wish we could put the 100 acre wood back the way it was, too. Alright guys, we have our torn page turned into the power of time. Stop has been upgraded to Stopra. They got really creative with these, you know, names for magic. But Stopra, I never really use Stop Magic all that often. I only can only guess that it stops enemies, like, from moving. But I really doubt that works on bosses, which is the only time I could ever really imagine you would need to use it. So let me go ahead and try this minigame again, guys. Like I said, I need to get over 40 yards, and I'm not sure, but I think... I don't even know if this is possible now. I don't see any honey jars anywhere. I thought that if you gave Pooh honey jars, maybe he would fly farther. I, I don't know if that's just like a, a childish memory I have, like I remember that happening or if it really happens or not. But you can, without a doubt, do it without giving him honey jars one way or the other. So let me go ahead and try this again. Yeah, way, way over 40 yards. I'm surprised that worked like pretty easily there. And I like how Pooh, when he comes out, he's gonna say something like, I flew too far. And I don't, I thought there was, I wonder what the record, basically what I'm trying to say is, I wonder what the record is for this minigame. This is one of the games, like, I would hate for this game to get, like, leaderboards and all that kind of stuff. But if there was ever a time where I wanted to know what the record for a minigame was, this might be it. Let's play on the swing? No. And that's another thing I forgot to mention. Whenever you try to try that minigame over again, it seems like Pooh takes forever to actually, you know, initiate the minigame. You'd be like, alright, do you want to start? And I'll click yes, and it'll take like 15 seconds for the minigame to start again. 
But we're finally ready to go back to the outside world, which it seems like we've been in 100 Acre Wood for a long time now. But I need to go back to... First of all, I need to go back to Sid's house to buy... Or not Sid's house. Uh, funnily enough, he doesn't actually get a house, unless you count that house in the 3rd District. But from Sid, I actually do need to buy some gummy ship stuff. I thought gummy ship, like I thought I was needing to buy gummy ship items, so I was about to go into the gummy ship for real. Let me meet you guys over by a Sid so I can buy that gummy ship stuff. And I would also like to buy maybe a couple of things from the item shop again. It just really depends. And another thing that I need to do, I'm actually going to grind up one more level. Because what level am I right now? I'm level 29. I think at level 30 we get an extra uh, accessory slot which will help for something that's coming up actually probably in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and grind up one more level, guys, and then I'll meet you guys back at Sid's place. Alright, guys, I finally leveled up. What? Look at this. Alright, I went up to level 30. You guys can see that I only went up one level, but it took like 15 minutes. I couldn't believe it. I really didn't expect it to take that long. But what I like to do at this point is actually take the White Fang... I don't usually have the White Fang on Goofy, I guess. But what I usually do like to do is give the White Fang to Sora to kind of make up for the fact that the Spellbinder is actually lowering his strength. So the White Fang kind of brings him back up to speed. And at this point, I think we're pretty much ready to go buy stuff from Sid because through all of that, you know, grinding... Oh, and by the way, I should probably mention this. I went ahead and equipped Jackpot and something else, Treasure Magnet on Sora and Goofy which made their, you know, money drops go way, way up. So if you're going to grind, I really recommend you have those on. But let's go ahead and talk to Sid and buy. I don't even know what I want to buy. I definitely need to buy the Com Level 3. I should probably buy this. I don't even remember what that does. Yeah, I don't even... Apparently, I can't even buy it. Did I already buy one? I probably already did. And may, might as well go ahead and buy the Color Spray, Color Palette thing. Now we have pretty much all of the trappings to make a pretty good gummy ship, I think. Because before I bought that Com Level 3... I don't think I could even add more engines to the ship. So luckily now we actually are able to make a pretty good gummy ship, which should make the flights between worlds not take like 20 years. Actually, I think what I might do now is go ahead and make one. But this is definitely not something I can show and not speed up. But this time I might as well... Oh, and by the way, it looks like I got a whole bunch of extra blueprints here. That's pretty cool. Alright guys, this big behemoth of a ship is going to be our new High Wind. I might as well just go ahead and name it the High Wind, maybe the High Wind. I wonder if the High Wind Mark II will fit. Probably not. Nah, I forget it. I'll just call it the High Wind. But obviously I am not a, a person who is really into the looks of the gummy ship, as we can see here. I Maybe later on towards the end of the Let's Play or something, I'll actually give it my all. Instead of just throwing, you know, every gummy ship or every gummy piece that I have on it. I'm trying to get- there we go. I was gonna say, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Olympus Coliseum because as Chip and Dale told us after Monstro, we are now able to actually play a couple of more games. And look at this, look how much firepower we have. And it looks like we actually get to lock on to people now. That is pretty cool. I'm not sure what- I'm not sure what does that actually, what part of the ship or what weapon or whatever. But, you know, we are actually going a little bit faster, I think. The last ship we had was not really fast at all. And what I think is funny, look at the placement of those ships. Or, I mean, the placement of the engines on the back. Those two huge ones on the very back are completely blocking those smaller ones in the... The not, like, the middle back area, if you guys know what I'm talking about. But I am actually going to speed this up. Not really too much point in flying all the way there. Alright, so I made it to the Olympus Coliseum, and now we get to go fight the... that ship, or not ship, I got so excited about the fact that I figured out you could actually shoot lasers, which I never knew about. But the cup that we did last time, the fill cup, I believe, we actually knew we need to do that, that time trial. So let me go ahead and do that real quick.
Alright guys, I think that is the final. Yep, AP up, and we have just a hair over a minute left on the clock. Easily beat that, and I like the fact that they stopped the clock, you know, between trials or whatever, because that would make it very, very, very hard if they didn't do that. Even if, you know, I'm a pretty high level to be doing that challenge now, I think it still would have been pretty hard if they actually kept the clock going. There are, there is actually now the fill, or the Pegasus Cup, I believe it is called. Let me check real quick. Pegasus Cup. I am going to go ahead and speed that up as well, and I know what you guys are thinking, I keep doing that a lot, but it is literally just the same fights over and over. But, you might want to stick around for the final fight in that actual, you know, cup there, because it is pretty cool. And I'm actually going to go ahead and fix up my items and stuff, because that final fight in there, in the Pegasus Cup, is actually pretty hard. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you guys in that final fight. Alright guys, we've made it to the first seed in the Pegasus Cup, Leon and Yuffie. I can't believe that these guys are going to be the final, you know, challenge here. And I don't think, well, the first time I played the game, it really didn't have that much of an effect on me. Kind of like I said the first time when we fought Cloud, I had never played Final Fantasy VIII or VII the first time I played Kingdom Hearts. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But still, I mean, it was a big deal almost because we were, these guys are our friends, kind of, you know? And... Obviously, this fight isn't like a, a fight out of malice or whatever. I guess it's just a friendly competition or whatever. It was still kind of jarring, though, to see Leon and Yuffie in the final, you know, thing in the... Especially this early in the game. This was a pretty hard fight. Hopefully, I don't lose. You know, I don't doubt that I might lose. And if I do, one reason why I might lose is because I don't have the Sonic ability equipped. I think I accidentally left Jackpot and, like, Treasure Magnet equipped on Goofy and Sora. And that is a problem because, actually it's not really a problem, it's just completely useless because obviously no treasure gets dropped in the, whatever this is, you know, the fill cup or the Pegasus cup or any of the cups really. So it's completely waste, like a waste of AP to have those equipped. And it's really helpful when you have Sonic equipped because look at Yuffie, this is one of the reasons like... I don't know, she she just moves all around a whole lot, she throws those shurikens at you, and I believe sometimes when they hit you, they actually stun you. So not only does she actually move a lot, she's hard to hit, she can st it doesn't look like it stuns you, but I think actually if you hit those back at her, or even Leon, they might stun them, I'm not entirely sure about that. But one thing, another thing that's annoying about this fight is that Leaf, Leafy, oh my goodness, Leon 
But Yuffie will actually heal herself if she gets too low and you don't hit her enough. But if you get her into a corner like this, which is what I like to do, she has a hard time. So, it, man, I'm... I actually don't remember having this much of a problem, and look at that, that is so cheap. I think, I know like I can heal all the time, but that is just like to be expected. When enemies themselves can heal, I think that is a little tiny bit cheap. Alright, Yuffie has been taken out, and luckily we got a strength up, which might help us a little bit in this fight against... Leon, I almost called him Squall. I always forget which one. Oh no! Well, that was, he took out, he hit Donald. Did you see that? But yeah, I always get confused whether or not to call him Leon or Yu. Oh my goodness, I'm just going crazy now. Obviously, his name wouldn't be Yuffie. Let's see if I can block this. Wow, that was completely late. Let's see if I need to get up Donald and Goofy because they actually do help in this fight. I think I might have mentioned this a second ago where you can basically block him into a corner sometimes, and that can help as far as, you know, keeping him from attacking even. Like right now, this is perfect. If we can keep him in this corner, we can pretty much take down his life all the way. Oh, that almost was pretty bad right there. I hope I have second chance equipped. I probably do. But yeah, look at this technique. All you gotta do is cra trap him in the corner. This doesn't work as far as I really remember in the solo fights, which, if you guys remember, we had to do the Pegasus fight alone. Wow, that was close. We had to do the Pegasus fight alone to win something. We can actually do the- or we had to do the Phil fight alone to win something. We can actually do the Pegasus Cup alone to get another whatever it is. It's probably not all that great, but you might as well do it. And I'm probably not gonna do it in this episode. I might do it later on, maybe after the next world. But, I guess that's all there was to Leon. I'm not sure if there's any dialogue between the three here or not. Not really anything special. I thought Leon and Yuffie might say something, but I, don't, I haven't done this fight in a long time. I think it would have been kind of cool if maybe they said, you know, good job at least. And we learn Strike Raid, which is yet another ability. I believe that is actually the ability that lets you throw your Keyblade, which I never really found all that useful. And I, I seem to say that a lot about a lot of the abilities in this game, but I never really found it useful. I don't know why, I just... Throwing your Keyblade really didn't do anything for me. I think that's what it does. Let me check really quick before I look stupid. Hurl the Keyblade at an enemy. Yeah, like... I'm not sure if you can get hit while you're throwing it. If so, that just makes it worse than I remember, because that would leave you completely open to, you know, attack from the enemies or whatever. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fly back to Agrabah. Luckily, I can warp drive there. I was about to say I'm gonna need to cut this out, but I forgot we have the actual warp drive now. And I'm going to fly to the next world and get the opening cutscene out of the way. In the next episode, I hope we can actually finish this world that's coming up. But let me go ahead and speed up the fly there, because we actually can't warp there because we haven't ever been there before. Alright guys, here is our next world, and it doesn't really look like a planet like all the other ones did. But let's go ahead and try and disembark on this ocean of a world here. I, oh, I knew Donald was gonna say something, he had to. Okay guys, prepare for landing. Land where? In the sea? We'll drown. Not with my magic we won't, just leave it to me. Sebastian? Ariel, wait! Slow down! Don't leave me behind! <laughs> no, relax. 
look, Sebastian? They don't look like one of them. Right, Flounder? I don't know. There's something weird about them. Uh, <laughs> uh what do you mean? Mm, they do seem a little different. Where are you from? Uh, we're from kind of far away. And we're not really used to these waters. Uh, <laughs> uh. No, I see. In that case, Sebastian can show you how we swim around here. Ariel, King Triton will not like this. Oh, don't worry. All right, guys. Apparently, we need to learn how to swim properly. We actually have to use circle to swim up and square to sim swim down. I find it kind of funny that we have to do this though, because we didn't say we don't know how to swim. We just said that we've never been to these waters before. The fact that she's like, oh, you don't know how to swim even though you live underwater? Let me teach you. It's kind of funny to me. But I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here, guys. In the next episode, we are actually going to brave the waters of Atlantica. So I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.